Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Nah, we're not starting it like that. Right, Let's go. Let's do this the right way. What a good be hoping this should be. It's your boy N O R E. Hold up, hold up. It's your boy DJ EFN, and this is. Intro doesn't include making noise. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it sucks. Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> B comes what? in with the catchphrase. Why does, it, why does it have to be abuse right away? Go ahead, do your cute intro. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, we're, hey. we're done. We're done. We're done. Anyway, hey, um, listen, I'm Cypher Sounds. I'm Peter Rosenberg. And we're from Wanda Up Is Life, the first ever hip hop podcast ever. Uh, ever great. first. That's ever great. first, but we're joined by yeah. the most successful hip hop podcast. Success. That's right. N O R E and DJ EFN. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're also joined by an incredible cast of legends yeah. to celebrate Hip Hop 50. Yeah. We got newcomers who are going to be legends. We have absolute icons in our midst. Icons. EFN, this is a crazy collection of people. Yes. This is yeah. wild right here. We got pioneers, we got people doing it right now. This, this, the game hasn't stopped. Hip Hop yeah. is 50 years old right now. 50 years old. We're calling this 50 Sips, ladies and gentlemen, because okay. we're getting drunk. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Here. I'm hip hop. Okay. Okay. To toast to that. Yeah, yeah. toast to that. So, toast to hip hop. Whose crazy idea was this panel? It's a great well, idea. It's a co conglomeration of some monster energy. energy. Yeah. Yeah. Was it Mo did Monster go in the boardroom and say, let's just do some fucking crazy shit? Yeah. <laughs> that's how they sounded, too. Yeah, that's how they sounded. <laughs> it's like, yo, let's put everybody together, like from every generation. And whose who's idea was, I thought you was going to claim it, Rosenberg, no? No, I'll, I'll, I'm happy to claim it. Okay. Um, but I would be utterly lying. Now, okay. this is super exciting. Okay. EFN, can you announce the man sitting next to you, please? This is what? crazy, man. Legend. Grandmaster Kaz does not need to I mean, I'm legend. legend. You have to. You can, it's like, okay. hip hop is a officially here if okay. Grandmaster Kaz is in the yes, building. Right. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, be the only one that was 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You're really the only one. You don't look it, you don't look it, you don't look it. You look fantastic. What about introducing who's next to you? I mean, guys, we're talking about the, the original mm -hmm. female MC, a B-girl going back to 1976. Shaw Rock, ladies and gentlemen. Hey! So let me add that to you. 1977, I became the first female MC of hip hop culture. Yeah. Before records. Before 1979. Wow, wow, yes. wow, wow, wow. That's my sister. We on Rock the Bells Radio Monday through Friday. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's right. Every single day. Um, and ha let me just start before we get to all these other introductions. I do want to start with you guys, the OGs, the true OGs here. How has Hip Hop 50 been treating you so far? Have you been enjoying the celebration? Uh, most definitely. Um, we've been on radio for about almost two years now, and so we chronologically go over the history of the culture on a regular. Since we've been on the radio, that's what our show is about. And um, this year's been amazing. I mean, we saw it coming, you know, we talked about it, but actually when it came in, everything came to fruition, and it's like, you know, we just hope that it continues uh, in year 51, yeah. like we talked about earlier. Um, this is important, this is a milestone, yeah. and this is gonna be our first 50th and our last 50th. Cause okay. we're not gonna be around to see another 50th. We will not be 50. here for the next one, <laughs> so it's yeah. extra special to us. Yeah. My, my thing, yeah, my thing is that, um, and this is what I want everybody to understand, when we're talking about the 50th anniversary of hip hop culture, there is no way that we are supposed to be just celebrating the rap aspect of hip hop culture. Right. Yeah. The culture and all its aesthetics of hip hop culture, all the elements is the DJ, the B girl, the B boy, the graffiti artist, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The MC. We are supposed to be celebrating, and for everybody that's watching this show right now, if you're not celebrating all of those aspects, right. you are not representing hip hop culture to its fullest. Mm. You're not. You're not. These guys came with an agenda. I like this. this is no, like no, this. this is something no, that I preach. No. no, no, this is something that I preach 100%. all the time. This is something that I preach all the time, and my thing is that you don't have to be out there, be girl and be boy, and you know. But the DJ, the MC, we're all celebrating. These are what encompass what hip hop right. is. These are the elements right. that is called hip hop from the time that Keith Cowboy first 
coined the name Keith uh, uh, Hip Hop Culture. This is what hip hop is about. Yeah. And so when you hear, you know, the aesthetics and you hear some people, you know, saying, oh, or you saying, yes, yes, y'all, you got to know where that came from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to understand the history behind it. So there's no gender there. It's just the history of the culture that we're celebrating 50 years of hip hop. And you got to know what that means mm-hmm. and it entails. Mm-hmm. Bottom line. Play, make some noise for that. And it's funny you say that because um, I feel, you know, like you said, the four elements, DJing, graffiti, MCing, and then breaking. And later on, they added knowledge, beatboxing, that that came later. But those are the four core elements that encompass what hip-hop is. Mm -hmm. And I feel breaking sometimes gets treated lesser on the on the totem pole. So we got a, a B-boy legend, B-boy Moy in the building. Yeah. Who's who's had some been part of taking breaking to the Olympics. Olympics yeah. So bro, come on man. Yo man, first off I just want to say it's an honor and a blessing to be surrounded by legends in the game. You know, I started breaking in 95, but to be surrounded by so much history, I mean, honestly, I get chills, you know, to be here and to uh, just elevate the culture and where breaking is going with now Paris 2024 and breaking now being on the Olympic platform. I think breaking is finally going to receive that reinforcement that is always needed because back in the 80s, I mean, it was it was definitely seen in movies like Flashdance or documentaries like Star Wars and, and, and breaking was elevating the culture in so many ways, but the breaker was always getting pushed back in the yeah. back burner, but... Uh, you know, thanks, Chirac, for, for bringing that to light because, you know, the B-boys and the B-girls, you know, were a big piece of the culture and, yeah. and, and it got to be uh, combined together and reinforced. And I just love that just the concept and the idea of hip hop culture growing and to be a part of it. Man, it's a true blessing. Well, it was hard to see b boy and breaking because think about it, like the DJ... It plays the music and it's part of foundation. The MC's original job was to big up the DJ. DJ. And then you take graffiti where your goal was for the graffiti to be seen everywhere. So that's why they put it literally on a train so it would move around the city. How was breaking represented? You know what I'm saying? So now it's going to be in the Olympics and on the main screen it's going to show a whole nother level of Look, the, the B-boys, the B-girls, they don't exist without the DJ. Yeah. They don't exist without the MC. They don't exist without the artwork. All oh. together, it paints a beautiful picture. Yeah. And I just hope that the, the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, can really uh, reinforce that because, uh, you know, the opportunity of being part of a big platform, you know, uh, everyone is a little, has a little fear that the essence of hip-hop culture might be diluted. But it's important for people like us to kind of voice our thoughts and opinions and kind of bring that no. that expertise to the table and make sure that that we go out there and do that. You know I just want to see I just want to see what what commentators they have from NBC <laughs> calling the breaking. <laughs> That's the conversation yeah. we had, right? Yeah, <laughs> because exactly. I'm a B girl in 1976, right? And so, of course, you know, Cool Herc, 73, you know, father of hip hop. We've co- we coined him the father of hip hop because, yeah. you know, he had the A1 B boys, the Keith and Kevin, which you know, was called the Legendary Lincoln Twins, and they changed their name, you know, recently, right? No, for real. And then you had Trixie, the first B-boy. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you remember no, what I'm I'm laughing. I'm laughing. No, it's true. I'm laughing at you. I didn't hear what you said. No, I'm laughing. You said that. No, I'm kicking the ballistics. I'm, I'm laughing at when you said that his face was like, oh, no. No, no, no. You know, the of first course. MC. So we knew them as the Lincoln Twins, but oh. as they got older... How did you know them as Rosalind? <laughs> 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 twins. Right. The twins. They, they Thank you, Bob. The twins. The name. They recently changed the name. I'm sorry, man. They recently I'm changed the name. Value. But but the thing is, what I'm saying is, like he said, you know, as far as the B-girls and the B-boys, and we'll get to the graffiti, you know, how they in, intertwine with hip-hop, you know, in general. But yeah, the B-boys and B-girls are underground, and my thing has always been, listen, if they go into the Olympics, you got to know where it came from. And yes, people like to say, oh, B-boyism, B-girlism started back, you know, in the 30s, you know, when you had, you know, different 
different old, older people, you know, break dancing. But we're talking about hip hop culture. Mm -hmm. And Cass has, has this saying that, you know, hip hop didn't invent anything. We reinvented right. everything. everything. So I hate when people come, yeah, well, it started in the 30s and it started in the 40s. No, hip hop was reinvented and all of those elements were reinvented, yeah. you know, to, uh, you know, to make up the culture of hip hop. Yeah. So I would like to see, and we talked about that, of yeah. how break dancing is going to, or b-girlism or b-boyism is going to, how it's going to affect, you know, um, I, I want to see it take it taken from the beginning no, to how it is now. And one thing we got to note is that I don't think hip hop would have grown internationally the way it did right. without the b-boys and b-girls and graffiti because before they understood the lyrics, they was dancing to yeah, the music dancing and they, and they was tagging up. You, yeah. It's none without the other. Right. I can't wait to see the Bulgarian Olympic b-boy team. They're gonna kill <laughs> Bulgaria is a fire. No, yeah, you gotta watch out for Bulgaria. Because we, we started with the up rocks. The up rocks in the 70s were the up rocks, and then it progressed, you know, to the floor moves and, yeah. and all of that. Maybe stuff. they'll create a sequel to like Cool Runnings. Right, right. right. <laughs> About the Bulgarian <laughs> yeah. B boy team? Yeah. That'll be something. Scythe. Rodenberg, you can shout out the Bulgarian <laughs> twins. <laughs> all day. You shout out the Bulgarian twins. Love the Bulgarian twins. twins. Uh, Scythe, if only we had someone here from the graph world to, you know, explain the graffiti side. You mean of the OG LA. Graffiti legend Risk. Right? Oh! Yeah. Thank you. I'm like a fly on the wall here, man. I'm just listening to everything. I'm just—it's an honor to be here. This is really amazing. Can you, uh, Risk, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your origins, your origin story, and when you went to New York from LA for the first time? Yeah, man. So, uh, you know, I was introduced to graffiti from someone from New York, and I saw the trains and and I, uh, Star Wars and uh, you know subway art. That was like the Bible to us, stuff like that. And all I want to do is paint trains, right? So we didn't have trains. I went and painted some freight trains. That wasn't the same feeling. I graduated high school, I hitchhiked that day to New York to hit trains. And I just, I was like, I was on a mission. I'm sorry, was, what, is, what is exactly hitchhiking? <laughs> what is exactly that? <laughs> when well, you put your thumb up and for look real? for a ride. I thought, I thought that was just on TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't really do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't even get out of Hollywood. Someone's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm hitchhiking New York to paint trains. He goes, you're fucking stupid. He goes, take my car. I'm like, what? He's an actor. He goes, I'll pay you to drive the car. I said, great. Yeah. So it was, it was a little easier. But I made it to New York, and I met some great uh, legendary dudes, Ghost and Vin and Reese and Ket and Chino and all these dudes within like five minutes to get to New York. And... Um, they're like, what are you doing? I told them, they said, that's fucking wild. They go, you're going to get killed. <laughs> you're fucking out of your mind. And they hooked me up, man. And they took me in, and they took me into all the yards and the trains, and we started painting. I met Lee and all these dudes, and I went to Henry's studio, and it was fucking amazing. And uh, that was my introduction to graffiti, to becoming like on the platform of graffiti with all these giants, so to speak. And uh, I was always embraced by New York, and I, I was a West Coast dude, and I have a New York style. And that's where it came from. That's how it started, you know? I was started in 83. And uh, yeah, love it, love the art form. I appreciate every aspect of it. I appreciate every aspect of hip hop, you know. And, and let me let me co-sign with you, sir. Um, when you talk about graffiti art, a lot of people like to say, okay, so graffiti, you know, it was had their own, their own section, right? Yeah. But how it came into play with hip hop culture is because you had the people like Buddy Esquire, who was the king of flyers in New York, and then you had Anthony Rowley, and then you had other, you know, artists, you know, that were painting on the trains in New York City. And what happened was in 1978 switched the whole game of graffiti coming into play with hip hop culture. And how that started was is that they took what they were doing on the trains and, and um, transitioned it to flyers. And so that's how, and a lot of people say, okay, well, hip hop, you know, graffiti is not fires, but that's how it came into play with, with um, hip hop through the, um, through the graph artists that were painting on the trains, like the Buddy Esquires and, and Anthony Rowley's, that would transfer that information over to flyer makers. Mm -hmm. And so Buddy, Buddy Esquire became the first um, uh, uh, graffiti artist, you know, that make flyers. He was a part of my group, the Funky Four Plus One and the Brothers Disco. Mm -hmm. And he began to start making flyers for every single group artists that was out there, you know? And so how, that's how, you know, graffiti in, intertwined with that. And he started drawing uh, uh, graffiti on people's pants. Like how she said graf graffiti, graffiti. Huh? You make it sound French, graffiti. Well, 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 well I'm living in, I'm from the Bronx, right? I'm from the Bronx, I'm from the Bronx, I'm from the Bronx, but I'm living in Texas now, so you get the best of both worlds, right? So you get the best of both worlds. So what happened is that he, he started drawing on, on, on the pants and the dungarees, you know, the, the eight ball jackets and all that stuff. And 
and, and mm -hmm. on my DJ's car, DJ Breakout on the Doom Buggy. He started doing graffiti on Doom Buggies and cars, and that's how graffiti came over to hip hop culture as one of the elements for hip hop culture. I want to I want to look at graffiti and eat linguine. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Bun, why don't you, can you tell us a little bit about your, your coming up, your first sort of engagement with hip hop? Like, do you, I always ask that to New York artists, but growing up in Texas, what was your first engagement with hip hop culture? That's, that's a great question, actually. So I had an, an, a stepmom that was really into music, and she would keep a lot of music around. And it was, it was a mix of music, right? So there was some hip hop, early hip hop thrown in there. But then there was also like Millie Jackson and, and Dolomite and like real wild-ish, right? You know, so as hip hop started to become more reflective, I was like, okay, well, well the shit they were making then is kind of like this, but with different beats and all of that. But I think for me, it was obviously the message was the first record that I was like, damn, broken glass everywhere. What the fuck are these people living in, right? Like we had we had projects and like we had, no, but no, we had projects and it was crazy, but it wasn't broken glass everywhere, right? You know what I'm saying? People picking on this stuff, you but, know, they just don't care. But they were painting pictures, right, of, of where they lived at. And the more you listen to it, like me being in Texas in the small town of Port Arthur, I'm like, yo, it's, it's happening in LA that kind of sound like it's happening here. It's, it's happening and in New York that kind of sound like it's happening here. I just don't get those words, right? And then you start meeting people, you start to break down the lexicon. Oh, that's what that mean? We just call it like stabbing it again. So that's what buck 50 mean. That's what, okay, all right, cool. And then you start, oh, I'm like, oh yeah. And then the Ghetto Boys made the song, you know, the world is a ghetto. And, and we realize that everything that we're doing, everybody else is doing, we use different words, we say it a different way, we say graffiti, right? But we all know what we're talking about. Um, but I wanted to be a, an active part of it, right? I came in as a fan with a real big appreciation of lyricism, and I was like one day, like, I want to... I saw Microphone Fiend, I was like, I want to be cool like that. Right. Like the video, black and white, walking with the light, had the little dude with the chain. I said, I'm going to get old, I'm going to have kids, my little man going to have a gold chain, we're going to be flying, all that type of shit, you know what I'm saying? But it was something that I felt like I had to be a part of. It felt so different from everything else that everybody was doing, and there was a clear entry point for me to get in. So I started out actually break dancing first. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, my thing, my move was a suicide because I was a big dude. You but I could cardboard? Hit the suicide. You use cardboard? Yes, yes. Oh, hell. I remember going to break in two and we just started break dancing in the movie theater. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just started battling in there, you know? <laughs> but when I picked up the pen and I started writing and I was trash. To be very real, my first rhymes were trash. They were garbage. But I was on beat, which is better than half the against the group I was with. They didn't even know how to rap to the beat. But I, I wanted to be a great MC, right? I wanted to be where if I ever did go to New York and I met somebody that I looked up to, like a Big Daddy or a Cool G Rap or Biz Markie or Mass Ace. I was a big Juice Crew fan, obviously. Because um, they, they were like one of the people that perpetuated 808 bass, right? And then South, bass was a big part of the culture. So it was very easy for us to enjoy New York music. But I wanted, to, when I met MCs, to be like, yo, you can rap. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, and, and when I started rapping in 88, it was not about getting money. It was not about being rich. I never knew if I would ever make any money off of hip hop. I didn't know if I would ever put a record out, but I wanted people to say I was a dope MC. And here I am, 32 years later, still beats again up on the mic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cash and can we add um, burgers to the hip hop element? Yeah. <laughs> you got the, the number one burger in America. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. and I do burgers too. <laughs> Let's make some noise for true burgers. Yeah, 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 yeah. By the way, if, if, if you've never been there, it's one of the coolest spots in the world. Like you go there, you can just chill out. No one's gonna bother you. They're just so used to stars there. Like everybody's VIP. It's like. And, and I, did, I, I, I stayed online like a regular person. I paid my tab like a regular person because I am a regular person. <laughs> and, and it's a great spot, but the thing about it is, when you think about, that's hip hop. Like, yeah. that's it's hip hop. Like, it's almost, it almost should be on every, um, you know, on your rider. Yes. Mm. Like, on your rider. Like, I don't even care if you don't go to Texas radio. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not, not to just sell on the radio. I don't need to care if you don't, you go straight to, to Trill Burgers and get your hip hop experience on. No, because there's hip hop music playing, there's murals yes. on the wall. Like, yeah. you know, we try to make sure 
For me, it's, it's about cultural experience, right? We all representatives of the culture. We all inherently carry culture with us. So we, every time we come outside and people meet us, we may be the only representation of hip hop that they see. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like my restaurant it may be one of the first cultural buildings that they may come to and actually experience a hip hop environment. So I needed to look like it's trill. I needed to feel like it's trill. I needed to sound like it's trill. But we already know the burger tastes trill. But that, but that's what I want when somebody from New York or Miami or LA, whatever, when they come down, they should feel like I'm in Houston right now. I'm in Bum Beach right now. You know what I'm saying? Because that's all we do is provide cultural experiences for people. We're, we're these cultural conduits to the world. And I'm sorry to say that, but because so many people, besides Jay-Z, rappers would never be the entrepreneurs. They would always say that we was the stupid people who signed these contracts with perpetual long deals. Yes. And we were signing it like this. I know people that still sign to their contract right now, and people don't get a, a chance to have a second career. So you know what I mean? Or, or, or some of us a third career, you know what I mean? Like, so just to see you in the culinary arts, what is that called? Cul culinary arts? Culinary. Yeah. There you go. But it's really a cultural brand, right? Yeah. Because what happens is, as we go out into the world and we become more influential, whatever, we're carrying cultural equity with us. Right. And typically, that cultural equity is always co-opted by the sponsors and record labels and whatever. They basically try to pay us a bunch of money to sell their products so that we don't turn around and use this cultural equity to sell our products. You know what I'm saying? And that's where the real transition comes in when we realize the real power we have. Well, if I'm doing this for them, if they're paying me 500 racks to promote this product, they're going to use my cultural equity and they're going to make millions. So I got to get my hands on a product that I can sell to the people and get my own millions. So I found my burger and I encourage everybody to take the cultural equity that you inherently carry as a, as a representative of this culture and find your burger. Now, Kaz, what, at what point was did you realize that this thing that you guys were doing back in the late 70s could one day become something that has cultural equity and leads to millions of dollars? Like, was there a was there a moment when you went, oh, this thing's gotten way bigger than I even realized? Yeah. Uh, people ask me all the time, did you ever, did you ever you know, did you ever feel or, or envision that hip hop would grow to the, you know, to the extent that it has? And I, you know, I honestly answer like, hell no. <laughs> I'd be stupid if I say, yeah, I knew it was gonna be this big, and I have no equity in it. I have right. except for who I am. Yeah. That's I, equity, though. If, if, yeah. yeah, that's right. that's a piece, but it's a lot of people. You would have been more proactive. I, if I'd have known, yeah. I, right, would, right. Yeah. I would own hip hop. Okay. Right. <laughs> you could literally <laughs> trademark. You could, you, could not, right. you could not. You could not have a hip hop chicken store or a hip hop clothing store or a hip hop. Hip hop is the biggest culture in the world. It's the biggest business in the world, and it's the only business you can get into without answering to nobody. Yeah. Mm. Thanks. You ain't gotta answer to nobody to say your product or is hip hop. Thanks. You don't gotta be certified by nobody. There's no governing board of, of, of the culture of hip hop. It's, it's just a free for all. Now, what other industry, whatever conglomerate, boxing. whatever corporation do you know? Just hip hop and boxing. That you could just walk into Two and, 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 Two and benefit off of, you know what I mean? So, in that sense, that's why it's grown to the proportions that it has. And had I known, I definitely would have uh, uh, t taken a stake in it, but we were part of developing it. It was in the process of being done. We were in the creative process. We wasn't looking at how to market it to the masses or or how to mass produce it. You know what I mean? We were individuals, all all trying to make a name for ourselves in the Bronx. You know what I mean? Or wherever we are, we were. Did, so, did you when people started really blowing up? When the first rap stars started happening, right? Well, I'm getting to that. Yeah. I'm getting to that. The first time I knew. Okay, there was a couple of signs that showed me, okay, this is going past what we're doing right here. The first thing was in 79 when Rapper's Delight came out. Yeah. Okay, when the first commercialized rap song came out and um, we knew, okay, this is going somewhere past where we thought. The second one for me was the movie Wild Style. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we did the movie Wild Style, it was like a stamp of validation from outside, like, yo, that this y'all doing is valid. 
Right. It's cool. I don't care what people, because hip hop in the beginning wasn't like, oh wow, what's that thing you're doing? That, that's great. People was like, what the fuck is wrong yeah, with you? Turn that shit down. <laughs> right, yeah, turn that shit down. Why, why y'all in the park? Why are you scuffing up your sneakers, yeah, spinning yeah. around on the floor? You're not supposed to connect to that lifeboat, sir. <laughs> what is you saying? You know what I mean? That's not music. That's yeah. all we heard. Yeah. Okay, but and the fact that it, you know, it got past all that and grew to the proportion that it is, is a testament to the power power of hip hop and like Bun B said you know find find your burger okay cuz we all we all got a stake in this culture yes, right. especially us that been here the longest mm-hmm. and one thing i think that there needs to be a distinction made between the culture that is hip hop and the industry that monetizes hip hop calling itself hip hop yes, yes, but, but isn't that isn't, isn't that EFN like the hip hop union that we've been talking about like like that that's what we, me and EFN like when we first um, started our, we, we felt like, you know, um, every other job that you have, like, you have pensions, you have this, like that, like, and there's people who put in time in hip-hop, and I feel like... With that, that equity that, with that Bun's equity, talking I about. Like, yeah. I, feel like, I feel like every artist, you know what I mean, like, should go to, like, build a, a, damn near a trust fund. Like, I don't know how much money it is, but, you know what I'm saying, so if anybody ever gets sick, anybody ever, like, needs something, like, I feel like we should have a pension. I feel like, like, I feel like, you know what I mean? Like, after 25 years, you're in here, you should get a big tag check, or, you know what I mean? Like, and your family should be straight. Like, no one in hip hop. But see, but see that, what the problem is, is that everybody within the culture agrees with the concept, but the funding has to come from the right. people that monetize the culture, mm, right. right? And we're never gonna get the labels to agree on that. So unless we, the actual practitioners, take it upon ourselves, to protect each other and help each other, it's never okay. this work. So, so, so I want I want to add that, right? to that. I want to add to that, Nori, because you have Curtis Blow, you have Chuck D, yeah. you have Special Ed. They have the Hip Hop Coalition, and yeah. that, that is what they're trying to do right, right now. Okay. So they're still trying to form, you know, similar to you know a, a union. Exactly. KRS One is a part of it too. MC Light is a part of it too. So they're still trying to form it to um, ensure that exactly what everybody is saying it does come to fruition. Because if you go to Hollywood, like there's, there's there's funds right. for actors. There's right. literally a house in Hollywood where when actors, it's a big mansion. Yeah. And when actors get old and they can't yeah. afford to pay rent, you can go and live I in this house. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah no, it's a, it's a big, nice house. We should just take the care. Mansion, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, so, but again, everybody has to figure out what their level of participation right. is going to be. Do we make the Jay-Z's pay more, mm-hmm. right? Do we make the Scarlet's pay less, or do we just have a general amount? Right, that everybody contributes to, and then somebody's got to monitor the finance. Well, and we all it, and it, and it, because, it, 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 But the problem be, is, is that because so many, so many of us inside of the culture have had such bad financial situations Absolutely. within the culture, have been taken advantage of by contractual law. So we come in with a lot of apprehension yeah. about money. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to take literally the same way that we have this diverse group of individuals representing the culture here. We need hip hop lawyers. We need hip hop accountants. Mountains, right? Like, that's part of the culture, too. Somebody's got to help protect us from the vultures. You and know and what they're saying? out there. And it has to yeah, be inclusive to there. the B boys, the yes, artists, the B girls. Like, that's why I said. So we, we, just have yeah. to, we just have to really Lawyers. find a way to agree on what the level of participation is for different representatives of the culture. And it would benefit all of us simply because at some point, <laughs> Kaz and I, we helped create it, this culture. And then you have Nori, and then we have you. You know, and then we have Scarlet. At some point, we all going to get older, course, yeah. and we all going to become legends, pre-legends, you know, or legends, or whatever. Old school, yeah, or old school. Old school. We OGs. all going to become old school and OG. So this yeah. is to protect all of us, Absolutely. and for the people that's going to be coming behind us. So you said there could literally be. So you could literally be like a card-carrying member of hip hop culture. Yeah. The only, yeah. issue, the only yeah. issue is if you look at like workmen's unions and teamsters and all of that. All of the people in the union genuinely make the same amount of money. Right. Right. So they're all getting the same issue pulled out of their check. We have too many varying levels of income in hip hop. So we just got to figure out if you're this level of rapper, you contribute this. If you're here, you right. contribute this. If you're independent and you get a higher profit, you know what I'm saying? And not just a rapper. I, I'm you going to have to kick in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're a podcast. 
podcaster. If you're if you're the most if you're the most successful podcaster, this is some here. That's my idea. I, I know how this works. But but, yeah. but you say contribute. That's true. I'm co-signing. Yes. But we have to get the corporations that has benefited yes, right. and yes. have not really given back that's every until corporation. the yeah. 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 anniversary yeah. of hip hop. Right. <laughs> Every corporation Wait, has when, benefited. When we talk all this hip hop, let's talk to the youngest artist yes. in yeah. the building, Scarlett. Make some noise for Scarlett. Yeah. When you hear all this hip hop 50 talk, what, is, what do you think in your generation? Like, and you hear, like, does it even make any sense that it's 50 years old? Right, I thought it was really older. Right, right. <laughs> I ain't that young. <laughs> Years isn't that long, you know? Right. No, no, it's we're not, babies. We're babies in terms it's a, of It's a very new, in the, in the grand scheme of things, a yeah. new culture, a new genre. You know, it's 50 years now, but it's like, think of, you in know. Comparison, right? Yeah, so. classical music is hundreds of years old. Like, this is very new. And uh, do we all look like old men to you? We look like a bunch of old <laughs> freaks, right? Like yeah. <laughs> I just see legends. Oh, yeah. That's what that is. I really like. I really, like, I'm from the Bronx, and I really like the resurgence of the, the Bronx and hip-hop right now. There's, and like, so many Bronx dope artists. And exactly. The Bronx female yeah. MC. That's, like, you that's... must be so proud. I am. I this went to her. This is a year of female MC, yes. which is crazy. Really yes. Is. It really There's is. There's so many dope girls right now. So many. And I went to Scarlet off record. Yeah. And I told her how proud I am of her. Yeah. Because the first thing people like to say when, when they know that I'm an OG and the first female MC of hip hop culture, well, what do you think about the female yeah. artists that's out here today? And I rock with all of them. Why? Because a lot of times when we talk about hip hop, and I said that before, people just look at the rap aspect. Yeah. But we are all individuals. If we all sounded alike, then it wouldn't be rap music and it wouldn't be hip hop. So I love what you have brought to the table, especially being a new artist, because I told her when I heard her song and I was driving on the highway in Texas and she was like, back the up, move the back. You know what I'm saying? And I was on the highway like this, telling everybody on the highway, back the up, move the back. Because I get it, I get it. You know what I'm saying? This is how we live, not just in the Bronx, but also in New York City. We always had that type of attitude in New York. Look, I just got up, don't fuck with me. Let me get myself together. And I respect her so much. And, and every they, people think, see. people think out of New York, people think New Yorkers are rude. We're not rude, we're just in a rush. Like, do me a favor, back the house up. Move the house back, you know? We got things to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, me personally, but, yes. But it's also crazy yeah. to think about now where hip hop can still go, because if you look back at the last 30 years, we've had all these moments. I mean, Latifah and Moni put out Ladies First 30 some years ago, right? Wow. And you're like, wow, it's time, it's time. Fast forward. You get, you get Lauren, fast forward, you get Nikki. Fa we keep going. Yeah. And it really was, this is the first year right. where the women have do yes. truly yeah. dominated yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Women it has always been on the front line. We've always been on the front line. It's just that y'all dudes wasn't talking about it. <laughs> y'all wasn't talking about it. This turn. But we've this always been on the front line. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, a lot of opportunity for all types of different females to come yes. in the game. Because before it wasn't really like that, you know? Mm -hmm. But like now it's just like a whole bunch of females able to just take over and do what they want. There's yeah. enough room for everybody. I yeah. think sure. they're winning. I think they're everybody. winning because they're so different from each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas a lot of the males, it's, it's such a male-dominated, you know, genre as far as numbers are concerned. And it's pretty much the same, you're hearing the same thing. Constantly, so when you hear something different, and it's innovative, it's bright, it's young, it wakes you up. You're like, okay, I'm, let me go over here, yeah. and that's where everybody is. And, right and that's now. one of the reasons why Scarlett is winning right now, because um, people wouldn't expect a, a, a you know a, a dope you know MC and female to come out and be that aggressive, yeah. but at the same time, you know, um, ladylike. You understand? Because what you did was you appealed to so many different aspects, not just the men, 
but the women. So your content, for every female that's out there, your content at some point has to be different. Because if it's not different, you're going to be in the, in the, in the rams with everybody else until you have somebody like Scarlett that came right. out and said, right. back the up, move the right. back. And she, she got the attention of everybody because her content was different. And in order to stay in the game as a female artist, you got to start bringing different content. And that's how you're going to survive. And she signed to the perfect label, Rough Riders. Yes. <laughs> perfect label. Perfect label, Rough Riders. We all know had great success yes. with a female uh, artist. You know what I'm saying? Being in the yes. legend. But, 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 but not only that, the streets and, like, if, you, if I was to say that the first time I heard her music, I would say that was a female DMX. Yeah. I would say that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and, and like... And to be with Rough Riders, I'm like, this shit is perfect. Like, this is God coming down, yeah. Swiss Beats. You know, this is this is DMX coming to Swiss in a different form. I, I got too deep. Did I get too deep? Did I got too deep? Yeah. I like that analogy. You don't know, no, but it is. But it is. Like, just, just think about it. If we believe that life continues, DMX never moved on. DMX is in her spirit. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's hard. I, I feel like that's hard. I feel like that's hard. Oh, um, another another young artist who's impressed a lot of people and who just like from the first second I saw him felt like he had that spirit and conscience of of classic hip hop mentality, caring about more than just the surface. Is the Bay's own Simba who's with us Whoa. today? Oh, okay. uh, where 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 did you get sort of your? Hip hop sensibility, because you are not like everyone who comes along in the game. But still very contemporary. But right, right, well said. Yeah. Exactly. First off, let me say, um, allow me to be patient with answering this because I'm still hooked up that Bun told me they recorded riding dirty in a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm still trying to put all that together. Um, but being somebody from the West Coast, especially being from the Bay Area, we grew up with an independent mindset. Right. So we grew up with this mindset of like, we could do it all. We could make the beat, we could promote it, we could write the rap. For me, a big part of hip hop was my mom. My mom was a real estate agent that used to be a rapper. And she sold houses all around the world. So as a six year old kid, I knew what it felt like to be in Brooklyn. I knew what it felt like to be in Atlantic City. I knew what it felt like I had a sister in Texas. Um, so I seen the world a lot as a kid. And one thing I would notice was West Coast music didn't really translate the best around the world. So I was like, when I started making music, how can I make something that translate to the hip hop culture in general? So I never was like obsessed with trying to impress the youth. As much as they say hip hop is a youthful sport, I still feel like youth is very fleeting. I feel like they grow up at a point in time and they still need guidance. I was always in, like trying to impress my peers. So when Nori came to Oakland in January and was like, yeah, you the new Nas, you listen, that gave me everything. Like that, that meant more to me. That meant more to me than my first check. Mm -hmm. right. Because it let me know I made him proud. It let me know I made Joe Budden proud. It let me know I made Jay proud. It let me know when Bun just told me, oh man, we did the song, I was mad about my vocals. It let me know I made him proud. Mm -hmm. So more than the money, more than anything, I came in this shit just wanting to make my peers proud and be accepted by people I looked up to. Yeah, and that's I love, I I love your from. story, your hustle. I remember you told a story where somebody invited you to the studio in LA, you had to fly to the Bay, and then you drove right back. Yeah, Nipsey. To Nipsey, right? Wow. It was the first time I met Nipsey, so I was in Atlanta. Um, this is around 2012, where I'm just young, trying to figure it out. Yeah. And I'm running around, you know, got a little money, and it was A3C Fest. And I kept hearing about, you need to go to these festivals like South by Southwest and A3C Fest and all these different things. So I was like, man, let me get a ticket and go. So me and my homies went out there and at the time they had this club called Compound. I don't know if it's still, oh, okay, okay, okay. So Nipsey was in Compound. He was like, man, what y'all do? I was like, man, I do music. He was like, next time you in LA, hit me. I straight up lied to him. I was like, I live in LA. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like I live in LA. Like, when you going back? He was like, I'm going back Monday. I'm like, me too. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I 
flew back to the bay. My car was parked at the airport. I didn't even go home and got clothes. I got in my car. I put gas in my car. I had a Camaro at the time. Got in my car, put gas in my car, and drove straight to L.A. I got on the grapevine. I text Nip. He had just landed at LAX. Where you at? He takes me back. 20 minutes later, I'm downtown. Pull up. Sent me the address. Came through, and he had a wall of books. He had a wall of books. And we did a song, and before I left, he was like, I want you to pick a book before you leave, and I really want you to read it. And the book I picked was The 22 Immutable Laws of Branding. And I read that book, and it taught me how to look at myself like a product, not a person. And I got that from Nipsey. That's something Nems does without even reading the book, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I know. But you ever disrespect time, me? <laughs> Calling me a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but Nems, tell us your story, because li literally, I'll, uh, my Nems story is just a few years ago. I, it was pandemic. It was yeah. during the pandemic. I, I don't know. Maybe we met another time at a random SOBs or whatever. But my uh, my boy Top Shelf Premium was having an event in Brooklyn. Early pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Super spreader event, by the way. Um, and I'm not, oh, super. Pause. 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 I did all right, but something didn't do as well. Then you were when you were outside. Yeah. So I'm I'm on the block and I see this dude who just looks like somebody. Like, this is a super underground event. Not a ton of people who look like they have something. This dude just like, I'm like, who is this guy? He looks like a superstar. Standing outside a car, posted up. Little do I know that at this time, this man is just finishing up his garbage route, literally. Yeah, like, facts. you were still on the job, facts. right? But the look he had was superstar rapper. Mm. And then, bro, within, I swear to God, within 18 months, you became a superstar rapper. <laughs> like, how how did you, just like we heard Simba's story of how he kind of figured out his brand, how did you figure out how to get the whole Gorilla Nems thing together? It was day one. I've been everywhere I go since I'm a teenager yelling out, fuck your life. It's been my shit <laughs> since, since as long as I can remember. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, nah, it's, it's not nothing new. Like, when I had, when I first started rapping in, like, the early 2000s, I had a group of us, my friends, that was like, yo, what we gonna call ourselves? I was like, we calling ourselves fuck your life. That's it. You know what I'm saying? If they don't like it, if they not with us, then fuck their life. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and then, um, I started battling. I went to the fight club. You know, they told me about it. I started just beating everybody. Like, I, I had, like, 20 wins and, like, no losses. I beat everybody. And, and it started, though, with the branding with graffiti. Before I was rapping, I was doing graffiti. Because mm -hmm. I knew that if you saw my name on the wall, you was going to talk about me. Mm -hmm. And then when I started rapping, I'm not good at art or none of that. I just would write names as big as I could on any wall that I could. I kept a marker with me. And then it started just every, every block in Coney Island said names, And then every block all over the city. And then people started noticing me from that. And then the, 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 the fight club shit happened. And then uh, people thought I was just a battle rapper. But what I was doing was taking verses from songs and just beating people with it, you know what I'm saying? And 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 um, and I just kept going. And then I kept trying and 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 not doing it. But I always knew that I had something, you know what I'm saying? And I knew that no matter what, this, I keep throwing this shit at the wall enough times, this shit, something's gonna stick. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I got went to jail, and then I got fucked up on drugs, and then it was just like. You know, one night I just had like a moment of clarity where I was like, yo, I could keep going how I'm going, I'm gonna be dead by the time I'm 30, or I could stop everything right now and live my dreams. And the next day I woke up, I ain't touched nothing since. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do nothing. I just focused on winning. And then um, I just kept doing it, and then I just kept, Instagram came out, just kept showing my personality, showing the people on my block, fucking with people. Just real New York, you know what I'm saying? We on the block every day. My era is from, I came up right before the internet, so before cell phones, right in that mist of it was coming out. So when I used to come out, it was like, yo, if you, are, if you leave your house, you can't get in touch with me. You always used to meet up on the corner <laughs> and joke on each other. And if you don't got jokes, they're gonna kill you. You're gonna have a bad night every night. You know what I'm saying? So I just learned to be quick, 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 like getting getting on people. But in New York, people don't understand. That's like a bonding, you know, that's like bonding. If I'm joking on, I'm not gonna joke it's on not you. Rude. Yeah, it's not at all. If I don't know you, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna joke with you. If I don't know you, if I don't like you, I'm not gonna fuck with you and get the fuck out of here. 
you know? So it just, I found a cheat code, you know what I'm saying? I like, everybody thinks I'm like a comedian or, nah, I'm a rapper. I've been yeah. doing shit, you know what I'm saying? I've been chopping people's heads off pause. You know what I'm saying? I've been battling, beating everybody, but, and I've been nice with the bars, but that shit wasn't getting me this way, so I just went, this way, started joking on people and fucking with people, and then they started taking notice. And then every between every don't ever disrespect me video or bing bong side talk, I throw on a freestyle. Yo, hey, 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 you know what I'm saying? Take that, and then eventually. And then the bing bong, they should also. Nah, that's remember that, Cass? Right. No, no, that remember that? We no, talked God. about you on the radio, right? Because Cass say bing bong, what the hell fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> so I say, Cass, watch what the fuck happened. That shit gonna go viral. And and what probably liked about the next week, bing bong, he he started. The that's bing a bong. product of oh, yeah. straight. I mean, Bing Bong. <laughs> yeah, nah, that's a product of straight hip hop. Mm -hmm. Rizzo, bang, bang. Right. So what I used to do is I had the merch, and I used to show it every week when I dropped new shit. And be like, yo, this check the new shit. Bang, check this new shit. Bang on my Instagram, and then one day I was like, Bing Bong, Bing Bong, and then people started laughing. I was like, yo, I got something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then side talk came. We did a video, and I was like, yo. I'm gonna start saying that. Bing bong, bing, and then it just took its own world. You know what I'm saying? And and. <clears throat> I was like, all right, I got something here. And then um, and then just kept doing those type of videos. And then, you know, um, you know, I did the album with Scram Jones and then we met up with Paul Rosenberg. And oh, congratulations, and by the way. Congratulations. All it is is hustle. That's all it is, is hustle. Like, I knew I got something. And, and by this point, where we at today is like, yo, like, switch up, like, right to where Bing Bong was, it was like, I was working a regular job, and but it was like, yeah, I've been doing this rap this shit now for probably like 10, 15 years. It's, if I just quit now, that's like working a job, about to retire, and just saying, fuck it, I don't want my money. I don't want my retirement money, nah. Yeah. I'ma just quit. I said, nah, I put in too much time to fucking quit. I'ma keep doing this shit until this shit happens. And then, you know, it shit happened. You know what I'm saying? Well, then what, the thing you said when you said about it was just hustle, like don't, don't underplay your success like that because you was hustling 12, 14, 16 hours a day and then f***ing off for the other eight hours and that should negate all the hustling you did. You know what I'm saying? You see it all the time with people like, I, I work all day, I grind, then I go blow a check. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have checks in the mail coming to blow a check. But at some point, like you said, I stopped doing the drugs, I stopped drinking, I stopped everything, and you locked all the way in and made hustle like your life's plan, not a lifestyle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I made that's that, the difference. I made it fun. I made like, so since I don't drink, since I don't do none of that no more, what's fun to me is making money. When yes. I go to the club, that's just not fun to me. When I'm getting paid to go to the club, that's fun to me. Right. I just fuck it around in my head where it's not fun unless I'm making money. You know what I'm saying? I love it. And then, you know, just even before this rap, I bought my mother a house and just that's all from the grind. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not willing to take anything less than what I want to do. And since I'm a kid, this hip hop mission has been in me, instilled in me. Since watching me off and disorderlies, fat boys. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know what I'm saying? That was like my favorite movie back in the day. And Underrated shit, movie. Yeah. Because what happened is my father died at four, and then Coney Island in the project, Dwyer Gardens, my projects, you know, like. My moms would go to work and I would just be in the crib by myself. And all day I would just watch rap movies and listen to albums and 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 like I'm like a encyclopedia for yeah. hip hop, you know what I'm saying? And hip hop raised me. And and um I knew since day one this is what I wanted to do with my life. And some people give up, you know, life happens, but I just wasn't willing to give up. Simple as that. That's all hip hop mentality because I always say, lately I've been saying if anyone asks me my culture, my religion, my my background. I say hip hop yeah, is the say answer. Hip -hop. Yeah, yeah hip hop. Drink chat. I'm hip hop not, is I'm the not, answer. I'm a political. What, what is it? Um, um, no, no, no. I'm Republican or Democrat. Yeah, I'm, I'm a hip hop. I'm a hip hop. Hip hop crap. I'm a hip hop crap. Yeah. Hip hop crap. Yeah. I don't know if it makes sense, but I'm just rolling with it. Nah, I like it. Hip hop crap. Hip hop crap. Sound like a drug. Hip hop crap is crazy. You better brand it. Somebody take it away. Hip hop in too. 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 Hip hop you know. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's the power of hip hop. And then I want to say DJ Stax that's in right. the building, International Club King. Yeah. He, he's where I first heard your record, Scarlet's record, yeah. 
he was playing it. We was doing an event together. He, and that's what the importance of a DJ is still to this day. I know everybody breaks music on TikTok and on the in, on the internet, but still, there's nothing like a DJ playing a song loud in a club or at an event. And that's what this guy does, man. And he's like pure hip hop. Stacks, what was your uh, what was your path to finding DJ? Oh man, um, I think it's a little different from everybody else in, in the sense of I was born and raised in Brooklyn. Yeah. Both my parents are Haitian. But when I say Brooklyn, I say different because I feel like people from the Bronx are like, that's hip hop, right? You used to wear the Jamaican belt? No, no, no. But I'm gonna get into that though, but I be feeling like Bronx is like hip hop, hip hop, right? And in Brooklyn, where I grew up at, in like Brownsville, between Brownsville and Flatbush, it was very Caribbean, like super Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So the ill part was growing up, my older brothers, they used to run with this sound called Stone Love that you probably know about, yeah. older Jamaica, right? And my parents are Haitian, so the Haitian music was there, and Spanish music, all types of music. My father, he was like a real music collector, so I, yeah. it was anything from Whitney Houston to Phil Collins, whatever. Now, my hip hop really honestly came from Queens. Because my older cousin, I knew it. I knew my it. older cousin, right? My older cousin lived on 112 in Springfield. That's right. Got right? <laughs> and I used to go to the crib and see the turntables and all that. And then, you know, rest in peace, like one of his boys used to come over. And, and who was one of his boys? It was Jam Master J. Wow. So I used to be in the crib with them and I'm they were cursing at me, don't touch my turntables. And I'm over here sneak playing. Yeah. And I started realizing the difference in music, like with dance hall and anything else, there's but so much technique you could actually do to certain things, break it down a record and all that. And with hip hop, it was like, I could break this record down and tell a story. I could do certain things with this that I can't yeah. do with everything else. And then plus it was bars, you know, it was less singing and more, you know, words and lyrics yeah. and stuff like that. So, you know, that's my, that's where it came from with that. And then the fashion, you know, the Eric B, the Rock M's, the EPMDs, and then the Queens hip hop to me that really caught me was the Mob Deeps, the yeah. CNN, you know what I'm saying, Nas, like, <laughs> Like, so I must say, like, first things first, just being on this panel right here and sitting amongst, like, real legends mm -hmm. is, like, super dope, and I truly appreciate it. And um, I just did my homework. Like, I started just doing research on hip-hop and, like, you know, where it came from, and, you know, and I started listening to, like, West Coast and Midwest, and, you know, I started listening to, like, the Bum Bees and, you know, all that. So it was just weird. So I started, I was kind of confused for a while because... I studied music. So, you know, I studied samples. Where did this record come from? Where did he get this from? And I was kind of lost for a minute, but then I started realizing where the money at. Look at the money's in hip hop, like not for nothing. And then the lessons are in hip hop. Like there's so much more to be told and learned from to me. So I kind of just went that route and I've been Gucci since. Like I literally play most of the biggest festivals across the world right now. Oh. Um, that's, that's where I'm at with it. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. The first time you drink Ace of Spades, what was that like? Hip hop champagne. I, I was I was on drink champ because I was super excited. Yes. <laughs> I was a mix of scared and excited. I I, I thought you they, a little scared walking into the room. Yeah, I thought I thought Nori was gonna like really throw me to the wolves, not in a bad way, he but do, just like he do his homework. There's a lot of I watch him. He do his homework. You could get from me. I know what you said. And he didn't. They didn't. They didn't actually steer me into that much of it. Right. Yeah. Now, did I know that two weeks later they'd then have one guest after another who hated my guts and would <laughs> rip me to shreds? No. Oh, I didn't know that. That either. wasn't planned. That wasn't planned. They have whole clips on why they hate Peter Rosenberg. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That he's oh, because it's been I'm, a couple. No, there's been a couple. There's been a couple. There's been a couple. <laughs> my thing is, every time I would link with Nori, I've only really spent like five extended periods with Nori. The third one was drink champs, right? But the first two times, drunk. Right, right. Just, just in general yes. interaction. Like, yes. I went to his projects, yes, I got right. there by like five in the afternoon. Yes. I ain't leave till like three in the morning. <laughs> and we just out, we drinking yeah, champagne, yeah, we drinking yeah. Armadale, yeah. on the block, getting slapped. Yeah. Getting yeah. Yeah. It was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Just drunk. Yeah. So then when I get ready to go to drink champs, I'm like, I'm gonna do this interview. Right. I'm not gonna 80, 90 right. minutes. I'm not doing all of that. Three hours later, right? Like, <laughs> my interview with him and Drink Chat is literally two hours and 45 minutes. Wow. And we try to stop from like 90 minutes all the way. And we just, the show restarts like right. three times. Cause no. it's like, you know what, let's do this. But let me ask you this. And I'm saying, what's but, up? I'm oh, yeah. Let's go. Yeah, Ben, keep it real. This is when we was learning ourselves. Yeah, like, we were we, just learning. We, we had you and the Beat Nuts. 
hooked up on like like I can't wait to like redo our episode. Yeah, we, like, yeah, we gotta have now, you back. Now, now, now I got our shit together. Now I actually, I'm actually articulate with this mother now. Like before, before when we were doing like me, and friend, and Fat Joe just put a mic in front of us and started talking, and then we threw the episode out, and it was like everybody likes this. Like we we don't understand that us just talking to each other is gold. I kid you not. I kid you not. I know I'm going to sound like but a... But we knew something. We knew something. But let me, let me say Between something. Between you and Fat Joe together, that's like a four-hour no, but, episode. But look, yeah. what, I'm going to tell you. It was. <laughs> Nas had hit me. I forget what t- period career this was. This is, uh, all right, this is the time where Talib Kweli, most deaf, and who else was on that cover? Oh, uh, what? You mean the, the uh, oh, source cannabis? Cover. You mean... You don't no, 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 no. What are you talking about? The source cover. It was like backpack hip-hop. Okay. And... Common, maybe? I don't remember. It was like, it was like, and Nas came, uh, well, we, we met up, and we was just talking, and he was just like, how you, how you feel about the cover? I was like, oh, you know, oh. he was like, yeah. And then we was just talking, <laughs> and then we talking, and then we talking, and then he said to me, he predicted it. He said, yo, one day, I don't know if he said one day they're going to pay us for our conversation, or one day they're going to pay you for your conversation. I forget. And then I remember that. I was like, holy shit. And then... Kept letting me go up to the mother uh, morning show, and y'all let me talk. And then I realized I knew Hot 97's number, 1-800-223-9797. I was like, what the f*** am I doing? I'm working for them, and I don't even know. So you found your trail burger. Yeah, I found my trail burger. Yeah, yeah, I definitely did. But Nor- I, I, Nori's- I found my Spanish trail burger first. Yeah. Nori's key yeah. to success right. is that Nori might be the most genuine person Facts. in hip-hop. And when I mean genuine, Thank you. I've, I've known Nori through all these different stages of his career. Mm-hmm. Same exact do wild you. words made up on the spot. <laughs> Lots of drinking involved. Gregarious conversation. Big personality. Right. Comes in the room and takes it over. That's right. always been a part of that. Right. But also, Nori has been right. ridiculously underrated right. as a man right. in mm. this mm. game. Mm. Make some noise, God damn. Everybody, everybody, everybody put and a wall around him and a roof over him that mm. never held. Right. Nori was not supposed to go as far in hip hop right. as he went, but right. he still had bigger records than to give him yeah. way better bars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because personality. Right. Like people genuinely want to be in your company. Right. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? Because right. the only difference between going on Drink Champs and hanging on the corner with you is right. microphones and cameras. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's yeah. the only well, thing. I, I going, know... going to your show is like going to the barber shop. Right, right. You know what I'm I know saying? Nori. I always say Nori was my first rapper friend. We were right. almost the same age. Right. The first rapper that was successful that was my friend is Nori. And I met so many artists through Nori before they were ever big. I met 2 Chains yep. in your studio before yep. he was big. Yep. Lil Wayne. Yep. Um, uh, Project Pat. Yep. Uh, David Banner. Yep. All was in the studio with Nori because he didn't worry about if they were wherever they was from. He showed love to everybody that came through. Yes. And like, you came to New York mm-hmm. and he would pick you up or you yep. come in the studio, he got weed for you, he'd take people to the tunnel or the club. <laughs> and it's like, he, everything he's doing now, exactly like he said, he's always been the same. Right. It's just, you know, I guess EFN gave him a little Direction, like, hey, do it this way. And then, and yeah, but by the way, while, while we're... <laughs> while, while we're giving out... Yeah. 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 Talk right into Right, right. It. Although he still you can't can get him to talk into the microphone, but still. <laughs> but also, but while we're giving out flowers to people yeah. just being the same people all the time, I was literally just having a conversation with someone yesterday about, like, as radio people, and really the three of us as DJs, DJs and radio people, it's kind of a similar thing. Like, our relationships with people have ebbs and flows. And there are people that you're super close with for a time. Nine times out of ten, when they reach a certain level of success, I'm sorry, they get funny. Yeah. And they stop, they stop returning the calls. The number goes green. You never hear from them again. We are sitting amongst the two most normal, non-weirdo mother. <laughs> In the history of the game, between Bun B and Nori, right, right, right. there's not a stage that I've been in, anything right. I'm dealing with, where people are saying 
about me that you guys don't pick up the phone and show love. And like, I'm just sorry, a lot of your peers, they may be great in many ways, they don't hold on to that quality though, which is endearing. Yo, that that goes a long way. Yo, that goes a long way in hip hop because being getting in this game, I meet legends that I, I came up listening to and you meet them and you're like, this dude's a f- cool bitch, right? <laughs> like, now I understand why they was dissing you, y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then you meet genuine people that might have not been your favorite, but you're like, I f- with him yeah. so much. Right. Just because the energy and the love that they show and it goes a long way just being yourself. That's is, is a big part of like, you know, listen, if... I try to embody that because I meet the legends like like Bun and I meet Nori and they and they genuinely who they are and who you think they are because so many times in this rap game you meet rappers that you think who they are and they're nothing like that. Nope. You know but if I'm I saying? if I could say something to that because earlier you talked about the coalition and the reason why coalitions and hip hop don't exist is because people have not found the route the right circle yet. Yeah. It's hard to find the humility and the genu- the genuine people mm-hmm. that can actually come together in a trustworthy and create a trustworthy journey that people can trust and, set the and so like aside. the concept of building a coalition has existed for many years mm-hmm. but like, the reason why like the, yeah or union or whatever like mafia. <laughs> <laughs> either way right <laughs> at, at, at the same time the reason why it doesn't exist is because everybody can talk about it but very few can actually do it absolutely right. what bun shared about like financial freedom or creating mm-hmm. financial equity like who's talking about that mm-hmm. nobody is and the reason is, everyone's thinking it, but very few can actually come together to do it because, we you know, stop just what you're doing for you. Exactly. Right, and start executing for us. And everybody, quite frankly, just isn't, take finance out of it. My people's mentality is not built around them taking things away from themselves for the greater collective. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because a lot of us come from circumstances where we never had nothing. Then we finally get it, and you like, why should I share it? You know what I'm saying? With people that won't even appreciate it. So it just, you gotta find that inner circle, a diverse group of people from all walks of the culture, yeah. right? Represent all walks of the culture that we trust. Right. Like, just people that we trust. But like you said, most of these things ain't even who they, we think they are. <laughs> They're not who they present themselves to be. And then you get them in a the room and you talk about some real they ain't got no conversation for it. Yeah. You know but, what I'm saying? But I'm glad, you, I'm glad you brought up the, uh, the entrepreneurship because that's one of the things that the younger generation said. Okay, y'all don't kick the older OGs, don't kick the, the ballistic to us. Mm-hmm. They don't talk, taught us how to move. Only thing they say to us is, um, you shouldn't be rapping like that. You shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. And this is how we bridge the gap between the younger generation, you know, and the older generation, you know, to kick those ballistics and let, let them know, okay, this is how you move. You want to be a rap artist, be a rap artist. But take that money that you use and, and put it into something else because you may not always be that rap artist. So you have people here today to be able to kick those ballistics to the younger generation and say, look, you know, we, we're going to give you the knowledge, but you have to take the knowledge. We're not talking at you. We're just talking with you. You just have to listen. Now, you don't have to take everything that we say, but just take it into consideration because what we all may have went through yeah, with we different... Have experience. Right, we but, have the experience. But, but some, so just some, use some it. older artists don't want to connect with young yeah, artists, sure. right? Should. Like, let's they just should. be very, no, let's just, I'm gonna be very honest, okay. right? They a lot should. of older artists, and I'm, I'm talking about my generation, before we even get to okay. Cass's generation, my generation, right, they, they look at what newer artists are doing, the level of success that they're attaining, mm-hmm. the amount of money they're making mm-hmm. for doing basically the same thing we did. Mm-hmm. And in some people's minds, we did it better, but they made more money for That's just a sign yeah. of the times. Right. That's got nothing to Absolutely. do with it. Absolutely. When, you take, you, when you take the money out of it, we're all fighting the same struggle Absolutely. to yeah. get somewhere. And one thing I could say is like a younger artist, like for real, like all the OGs really like been like supporting me, you feel me? Of course. And like, Giving me advice mm-hmm. and stuff like that, like Snoop Dogg, mm-hmm. Busta Rhymes, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So we, we, we want see, one thing, one thing I'm, one thing I'm noticing is like when it comes to artists like me and Scarlett who feels nostalgic, mm-hmm. y'all open. Right, y'all right. give it to us because we fit the criteria of yeah, what y'all fact. feel like hip hop's supposed to wow. look like. But when it's, yep, absolutely. When it's like, you know saying, like and, and we respect that, but when it's like, a younger person that ain't necessarily speaking what we right. speak, y'all alienate them. And then that fucks up the culture as a whole. Not saying not you, everybody. You know what I'm saying? Not Just everybody. saying as in general. I was yeah. looked at in my early years. What UGK was doing in 92 was not popular. No. Right? We were not looked at. We were not included in 
You can go back and look. Oh, there's no videos, there's no music videos, because the record company didn't want to make them, because they didn't think people were going to like us. There's no, not a lot of magazines. My mag first magazine cover was 22 years after I started. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't trendy to embrace Southern artists no, on the no. East Coast at that time at all. And it so wasn't I trendy. I can look at an artist and realize they're getting a bum rap just on how they present themselves. Like, I was with Sexy Red on Friday at Rolling Loud. Sweet girl. Beautiful girl. You know what I'm saying? People look at her approach as being different. No, that, that's always existed. Exactly. Right. That's always existed. Hip hop has always had this idea of reclaiming their bodies and their identity, exactly. right? That comes from slavery, right? People came out of slavery, they either wanted to recapture their soul because they felt broken and they went to the church, or there were people that wanted to reclaim their physical body because they've been raped, they've been slaved, and then servitude, all of that. And those people went to the juke joint. Exactly. So both of those are equal representations yeah. of the black experience in America and the experience of people of color in America. So we can't look down at people who aren't bar centric, okay. right? Because that doesn't mean that they're the best people for the culture. They're just better at what they do. But maybe that's all they can do is rap. That's it. They're no good out of any other part in their life. So for me, if somebody isn't necessarily purely lyrically driven, then there's got to be other aspects of their personality that people are gravitating to. And we have to look at that and see like, well, maybe there's a part of life that I didn't experience based on where I grew up or my age that they're experiencing and this person vocalizes that. Yeah. We got to be open to that because we were talking about crack and shit like that when it was not a popular thing, but it also wasn't everywhere. And then, and, then, and then y'all OGs were saying the same thing. Oh, we ain't with that. Yeah, we absolutely. With that. You know That's what I'm saying? That's a generational gap, right? Exactly. That exists in society, period. It's got nothing to do with music. Your mom's music was crazy to your grandmother. Your music is crazy to your mother. Your kid's music is crazy to you. That's a generational That's a gap. We shouldn't be on the same at 50 with 18 year old again, we should not be on the same page on no level other than just getting bettering our situation. That's the only thing I should have in common typically with a young person is drive, momentum, hustle, you know what I'm saying? Locking in on your goal. Those that so if we can't connect on the music, we can't connect on the content. That's cool. I'm not supposed to like everything young people are saying, but I'm supposed to support yeah, most person. of what young people sure. are doing. Fast. Fast. My mom did not understand me listening to Brandon. My mom movie still and, don't know who Bubby is. <laughs> <laughs> way, way, way. My mom don't know what I'm in this world. In the same way. She know I make rap music, but she, I send my mom money. She's like, don't send me that. That's too much. <laughs> the, the same way, the same way that you just broke that down is how we look at it as younger artists. So it's like me personally. When Nas dropped last night, I felt like I had to be the first to support it. When Ho dropped 444, I felt like I had to be the first to support it because these are people that show me how to exemplify myself as a man. But when I get the 47-year-old rapper that's still talking about being on the block, five girls and doing all, you, can, you got a wife with five kids. Tell us about that. Okay. What's life like that like? Cause I don't want to hear you compete with me. They're trying to talk to you, and they shouldn't be talking to you. Exactly. They should be talking to people that were 18 when they were 18. Exactly. That were 25 when they're 25. Because where we're, where I'm at in life is pretty much where everybody that started with me is in life. So the minute I stop trying to connect with them about where we are now, that means I want some of what y'all got, and I and I'm never going to get it. I know every young rapper out here. I can go get a verse from any person, but do people really want to hear that? If I go get a verse from Future, I, and I could go do that, do Future fans want to hear me with him? No. Do my fans want to hear me with Future? No. Can we mutually agree but still have respect for each other? But do, but do all of us? Absolutely. But do all of us want to see Future go to Trill Burger? Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking. That's why I love you. What about? Can I ask a question real quick? What about the other side of it? Well, hold on. Let me say something though. Okay. Let me say something. <laughs> uh, sorry. Sorry, a lot of times an OG will come and approach a young artist and because and, it happened to me when I was the young artist. When I was the young artist and they, you, yo, this is, much, much, uh, this is DJ Chubby Chubb from, from such and such. Like, okay, what's going on, Chubby Chubb? And they sitting there and they talking and then I'm the, I can't identify with him because it's just we from different eras, right? So I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. And you know, everybody you don't know. Like, like, we didn't know every single person in the NBA. He was a fan of Chicago Bulls, but you can't name every motherfucker on the goddamn team. So it, that happened to me until I became 
the OG. Yeah. That I was walking in and people was like, well, who the fuck is this nigga? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, the young nigga was like, yo, okay, what's, what's, what's up, Nori? But what I had to do was I had to recreate my whole shit. I said, ah, oh, shit. I had to start wearing these jewelries for these people, something for them to identify. Something for them to be like, oh, okay, I don't know this old motherfucker, but he got on a nice watch. Yeah, yeah. Or he got on something like he that. He must have been good at and, what he did. And, <laughs> and, and, and sometimes, sometimes that's the way to, 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 to relate to them because a lot of times I don't relate to all of them. So what you say, you say, we accept, you know, y'all oh, 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 three because y'all got bars and y'all got things like that. But a lot of the times, we don't even know how to approach you because your energy wasn't the same. Like, we wanted to meet Michael Jordan. Like, Allen Iverson wanted to meet Michael Jordan, then cross him over. But he wanted to meet him first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, as, as a, now I'm an elder statesman, I don't feel like the young generation be wanting to meet us. I don't feel like they want to. But, but they wear Jordans. No, they but do. they wear Jordans. No, they do want to meet you. They don't wear LeBron. They do want to meet you. They don't wear Steph Curry. That's interesting. But they wear Jordans. That is Here's good, the thing. Where are the spaces where we That's occupy the same space, right? And where's the level of entry for young people? A lot of times what you think is, is apprehension is really like, man, I want to say something to do. But and I don't know right. how. I don't know how to. Right. Like, That's you know, the thing. Like, really like, like, I'm, cause I'm I, so happy for her. Yeah. I'm so happy for her because I know her crew. I know everything that she represents. So it's easy for me to say, yo, homegirl, yo, yo, I'm so happy for you. You know, Nims, I didn't even know he was rapping. Uh, I, thought, I thought I'd just seen him on Instagram. I didn't even know, like, he's actually a legend. I was like, damn, man. I, I, I learned that the other day. You know what I mean? And it's just like, I want to relate. But some, but I also don't want to feel stupid. So this is what like, we I don't need. Want to we walk in that room and they're like, mm, whatever. In the same way, in the, <laughs> like, cause, in the same cause way I'm, that I'm that monster can put this room right with generational, you know, counterparts and contemporaries in here. We as a culture got to make sure that there's better entry points for these conversations. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So we gonna tape drink chats at Trail Burgers. What else is hip hop? Come on, let's make some more hip hop products. The whole English. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Four, I'm sorry. I'm back in my era. I'm sorry. Diamond chains. Diamond chains. Who? Diamond chains. Diamond chains. Okay, hip hop don't own that, but we gonna own it today. Yeah. Come on. Uh, we got else? we got enough jewelers of color. Yeah, we got, we got enough jewelers yeah. of color. Donnie Jane, Donnie Jane is a color. Yes, yes. yes uh, and we're gonna have we should have a real hip hop day like in every state. No, we should have like a hip hop like retreat. Yeah, that that'll be fire. Rappers go to not journalists and nice. and people like that, like people that are you know, like people that are active participants in the culture. Well, you don't have to have get, your ego. Well, it, well, we need to workshop and, and build with each yeah, other, yeah, yeah. right? And it can't just be at you know on a weekend where there's parties and other shit that's gonna take us away. Has right? to be real. Like, yeah, like, no, we need somewhere where we can build with studios and bars. Everything that we would want to participate and indulge in should be on the site so nobody feels like they need to leave and go anywhere. Whatever we need for us to, to manage three days together somewhere, have it there on the site. It's a lock out the whole it's a conscious resort, right? effort. And yeah. e even the young generation, because I, I think it's very important, you know, to include the young generation. Yes. Well, that's what, yeah. yeah, simply because, you know, um, there's not an artist, a young artist that's out there that I don't know about. I know about every single rap artist that's out there now. Why? Because I make it my business to understand where they're coming from. Because they're really speaking some of the stuff that we lived. It's just that they're talking about it more now. Mm -hmm. And so we have to include, hip hop has always been inclusive. Everybody has always had a table at hip hop. And we have to ensure, like Bun B, UGK, I knew about y'all before y'all even started making songs with Jay-Z. Because yeah. I had the best of both worlds. I'm from New York, the Bronx, but I was in Texas. So yeah. I appreciated y'all even before he knew about y'all. So I think if you open up and, and, and learn about these, these different artists, you don't have to like what they're saying, because right. I don't like everything that's out there, but I respect their craft. And until we get together and bridge that gap, that is the only way that, that um, hip hop is going and, and rap music within hip hop is going to survive where we're all respecting the craft from everybody to come through. Yeah, yeah that's, that's real. The culture, the culture is is alive and well. Um, the business, eh, not so much. You know what I mean? But because of the internet and because of our access to information now, everybody's better. 
Everybody sounds better. Everybody speaks better. Everybody knows more. Everybody's a little more in tune with everything. So we take that and we put that into like the things that we're trying to put together as far as preserving this culture called hip hop. Now I gotta bounce. I'm out. All right. I gotta. All right. Can I ask you one last question? Yeah, no doubt. Before we lose you, first of all, on behalf of all of us here, thank you. You being here means this whole thing doesn't exist without you. Um, but uh, is there anything, as we celebrate Hip Hop 50, is there any one specific message maybe that you feel like people are not getting? The importance of it is that we establish the foundation for a cultural movement that rivals any in history. Any war, any, um, you know what I mean, calamity, anything. You can put hip hop up in the same breath as anything that you can mention that happened in history. And I'm proud of that. And I'm proud to be part of the, uh, the fabric of that. Thank you. 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 Thank you, my brother. Okay. He, he hopping on a flight to get some more money. Yeah. Come on, goddammit. We love you, Yes. Can I add to one question? And, and this, this, should, this should be how hip hop is. No one sit in his seat. No. <laughs> no one sit in his seat. His seat is reserved. Put his jersey right here. That's right. Put his jersey right here. I want to ask Rosenberg and Cypher a question before oh. we get out of here. Please. Um, being radio guys, that came from, you know, traditional radio. How did y'all feel about the evolution of podcasting? Mm. Mm. They were the evolution. Yeah. Of the <laughs> I, know they, I know they were, but they come from... Okay, so basically, let's say, basically, do you guys look at podcasting the way Kaz looks at Right, 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 right. Like, that's just yeah, they do. Right? He being one of the original. If I can say, no, I'll be honest. Drink Champs is overcharging for what they did to the <laughs> 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 It's a business for the It's like you owe us for all the years that you no, owe yeah, us. Yeah, I didn't know that. We started, we, me and Rosenberg got put on the radio by, by Ebro introduced us, and he said, y'all gonna do a morning show together. And we didn't know each other. So this man had the smart idea. He said, yo, let's do a podcast so we get to learn each other's personalities. So you had like the re religious marriage. Like, yeah, basically, you know, it was yeah. arranged. Yeah. 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 It was yeah. arranged yeah. marriage. Yeah. 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 See, that's, that's what you're supposed to be called. Exactly. You're supposed to be called arranged marriage. Yeah. Right. There's yeah. a lot of stuff yeah. that Rosenberg says and does that I hate and disagree with. And he got a lot of I feel like that's ops. overstated now. Yeah, a lot of ops. I do. I'm a big op guy. But why I, I will always defend Peter Rosenberg is for his love of hip-hop. Me and him can talk hip hop for hours and hours and hours. And what we did, we didn't know what we were doing back then. We just, we were lucky enough to be in Hot 97 and a large professor was dropping. You know, oh, new drink champs this week, last week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like large professor was dropping a, a re-release 20th anniversary of of uh, main up. source or something. Right. So he was stopping by Hot 97. And we, he would always grab and be like, yo, can we go in the back room and do an a interview, which then became Wan Up Interviews. And the Wan Up Interviews, um, we were just two hip hop nerd fans getting the oral history of hip hop. I'm gonna be honest, y'all was ahead of y'all time. Yeah, we so know that. Me, no, we know say, that. Wan Up, so I like, this is what it was. Like, we were at Hot 97. We trained not to curse. Yeah. Like, y'all trained us. Like, I would go to Hot 97. I would think of everything I'm about to say without a curse word. Yep. Like, I would be, I, I, I premeditated every interview. And then y'all would come in the room and be like, to the next room. It's like, we're in the principal's office. <laughs> but then y'all would say, let's go to the dean's office. Right, right. And then say, you could curse here. Yeah. I say whatever you want. We never trusted y'all. <laughs> <laughs> was just like, a setup. This is a setup. And somewhere we're going to say something. And then they were going to be banned. And then I did not I did get banned. Not, so not related really to us, me. though. Not related yeah. really to us. Yeah, no. yeah but that's, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Jesus, let's not talk about that. But, no, um, no, 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 no. <laughs> but um, that's why, that's why I came off like, I would always say, Probably is your, your your fault, Rosenberg. I'm like, this, that's like podcast is nerdy, and EFM would call me and be like, um, let's do a podcast. I'm like, damn, I I, I know I, I help the nerds get on, 
<laughs> well, Pharrell. I mean, we're a billionaire's boys club right now. Holy moly, guacamole. But I was like, maybe we're not that nerdy yet, EFN. And EFN was like, listen, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And then he was right. But that, that's very <laughs> nice. Yes, yes. And I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what's crazy about that. I'm in L.A. one night hanging out with Kid Cudi. Excuse me, I, I was with Alchemist. It's a big difference. <laughs> Huge. <laughs> Not even similar. <laughs> it's a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Here's what happened. It was Frank Sinatra. No, it was Michael I'm, Jackson. No, no, no. I'm with Alchemist, and he goes to me, let's go to this Kid Cudi show. Okay. okay. okay there, there we go. Oh, yeah. At the time, I'm in hip-hop purgatory. I don't know if anybody knows what hip hop purgatory is, but you're gonna receive it at some point. <laughs> and that's where you go from being like here to like down here, but you're like right here. Right. And you don't know, because if you go up, you made it. But if you go down, so no coming back. Going to the garbage. Yeah. Back, to the, back to the garbage truck. <laughs> For real, you gotta realize they get tired of us. After a while, they get tired of us and they wanna kick us to the curb. That's the reason why we made Dream Chance. We wanna make people that's been here so long. So, anyway, what Alchemist, and he goes, let's go to this. I don't wanna be seen. Like, I don't wanna, like, I'm in purgatory. Like, I'm like, I'm not confident. So, damn, this is ill, right? I ain't gonna lie. I feel, feel deep telling this story. And I'm about to. <laughs> And I'm about to light up and act like I don't know if we can smoke or not. I'm not sure. We're going to figure that out later. So anyway, so anyway, I walk in, and then, I don't want to say nerds, but all of these hip-hop alternative, alternative you know? people came up to me and was like, you're the god. And I was like, why? I was like, I didn't shoot nobody over here. You know what I mean? And I didn't realize... I'm sorry, that's, that's how I identify with being a man. Like, <laughs> back then, like, you had, to, you had to pop somebody, you know what I mean? But they're coming to me, and what I don't realize is they're like, you put on Pharrell. Like, the first time we've seen Pharrell is, and he's our God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would say, this is this whole other alternative hip-hop that Kanye and... This was like, holy, this is not gangster. There's nobody in there with a bandana, nobody quit walking, nobody, nobody, nobody. In LA! In LA. I'm like, I'm like, you ain't gonna ask me what hood I claim? Like, you know, because I'm used to. Who you claim? Like, no, I only, no, this was alternative. Did this word you use? Yes. Alternative. And I looked and I was like, wow, there's a whole nother section of hip hop that a tribe called Quest. Because yes. they attribute it to me through Pharrell, but Pharrell is not where it comes from. It comes from actually Tribe Called Quest, and then what's the uh, Native Tongue, and they, well, it's all under the Native Tongue. And I'm looking like, holy oh, shit, it still kind of went back to New York. But I'm in LA, and I, that's when I discovered, I don't, what is it called? Can I be the backpackers? Um, uh, 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 the Kanye one? No, 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 it's not backpacking. This is upgraded from backpack. <laughs> This is a different. This is a different. Um, they, they cross like a skate. It's a kid cutty. Yeah. And yes, it's it's, 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 it's alternative, alternative, alternative. Yes, and and I realized there's other places of hip hop. Like in my day, I'm sorry, this is horrible. But if I did, if I performed and nobody got stabbed, I was like, this is a horrible show. <laughs> So, so I, I, I liked it. If I did what, 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 I wanted somebody to get what, 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 you know what I mean? It's like, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I went, I went too far, guys. I'm sorry. I go to a show don't get stabbed. No, no, I'm so glad I don't rap no more. I'm so glad. I like. <laughs> when I did Reggae Throne, I was like, I'm never going back. You, you want me to go back to rap? I just seen people dance all night. Hey, gasolina, holy shit. This is no, this, and nobody, nobody gets stabbed. Nobody, like, this hip hop was fucked up at one point. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to remind y'all of that. I know, it, was, it, yeah. it had nothing to do with the 90 people you walked in with. No, absolutely. <laughs> no, absolutely. Have, yes. Backstage area being completely full. Uh, uh, nope. 
all. It had nothing to do with me at all. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. What did you guys say? You got a question? I'm sorry. I'm going to tell you this quick story before we get out of here. Okay. I think I'm in like the fourth or fifth grade. I'm like fourth or fifth grade, and I'm arguing with my teacher, mm. right? And I tell the teacher, I'm like, you don't understand, like, I don't, I, I'm finna blow up. I don't even gotta be here, mm. right? So she like, what are you, like, what are you talking about? So I'm like, you want me to learn this and learn that when I already know what I want to do in life? I'm gonna be a rap star. Wow. So she was like, where is that gonna take you? And I was like, to the moon. And she says, what, right? And I look at her and I go. What, 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 what? And the whole class, the whole class starts saying it. It's to the point, I just did an interview on BET and my mom told the story about when she got the call that I was in the class standing on top of the desk going, what, 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 what? Oh my God. So I by the way, by the way, greatest story ever. There's no better way to end it on this note. And he ain't alternative. <laughs> Holy moly guacamole. This was great, man. I want to thank everybody here, even though I'm not moderating. Put it up. At this point, you're holding court. Put it up. Put it up. Shout out to Monster Energy, man, for putting this together. It's the 50th year of hip hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Everybody that done this, yes. um, I always say like rappers was my father when I didn't have one. Wow. So I appreciate Hov, I appreciate Nori, I appreciate Big, I appreciate Pac, I appreciate X, I appreciate oh. Scarlett yeah. for being a female that's not hypersexualized and giving right. men something to shout out that women can vibe to and we could all be in a club together. So when I'm in a club, I want to tell them to get hold the fuck up, right. move the fuck back. back. That's on us, that's hip hop. It's the 50th year right now. Yeah.